Deploy Llama 2 with a customizable front end in under 15 minutes using only UbiOps, Python, and Streamlit. In this guide, we explain how to deploy Llama 2, an open source large language model using UbiOps for easy model hosting and Streamlit for creating a chatbot UI. The guide provides step-by-step -step instructions for packaging a deployment, loading it into UbiOps, configuring compute on GPUs and CPUs, generating API tokens, and integrating with Streamlit for the front end. We conclude with a benchmark test showing that GPUs can provide over 30 times faster processing speeds than CPUs. This guide aims to make cutting-edge AI accessible by allowing anyone to deploy their own Llama 2 chatbot in minutes. For more information on Llama 2, UbiOps, or Streamlit, follow the link in this video's description. First things first, how to deploy AI models on UbiOps. The first step is to create a free UbiOps account. Simply sign up with an email address, and within a few clicks, you'll be good to go. Once you have your account, log into the web app and head over to the Deployments tab on the left and click on Create. In the following menu, you can fill in fields like the name of the deployment, a description, and define the input and output of the deployment. The input and output fields of the deployment define what data the deployment expects when making a request. In other words, when running the model. In this case, both can be set as type structured and data type string. After providing that information, UbiOps will generate Python and R deployment code snippets that can be downloaded or copied. We'll use these to create the deployment package. For this guide, we'll be using Python. How to create a deployment package. Open your preferred code editor and paste the Python deployment code snippet that UbiOps generated for you. The first thing you probably want to do is import libraries. For this deployment, you'll need to include the following libraries at a minimum. Now your code file should look a little something like this. Define your init and request functions. The init function runs only once when an instance of the model starts up, while the request function runs every time a call is made to the model API. Typically, an init function will include the necessary tasks for checking computing device availability, authentication, locating any generic files for your model, like tokens, among other things. Here's how to define your init function for Llama 2. Remember, the code on screen is all in the written guide on our website, so you can always copy and paste from there. This implementation downloads the Llama 2 7B model from Hugging Face each time an instance is spun up. For better version control and for faster deployment time, you can also store the model artifacts on UbiOps object storage and download the model from there. The request function should fetch the input prompt, run the model itself, and return the output. We apply post-processing to filter out the prompt from the response. Here's how to define your request function for Llama 2. Now that you've defined your init and request functions in your deployment class, save your deployment.py file to a directory. Within the same directory, create two more text files, requirements.txt and ubiops.yaml. In the requirements.txt file, paste the following libraries that ubiops will install within your code environment. Similarly, the ubiops.yaml file is used to install any CUDA configurations needed to run your application. Paste the following in the file that you created. Save both files to the same directory as your deployment code and zip the directory. Your Llama 2 deployment package is now ready to be loaded into UbiOps. How to load your Llama 2 deployment package into UbiOps and configure compute settings. Let's head back to the web app and click Next, Create a Version. To load your deployment package, you'll need to associate it with a version. Set the name as something like GPU and upload the zip directory you created in the last section. Next, toggle Enable GPU and choose Python 3.9 plus CUDA 11.0.3 as the base code environment upon which UbiOps will build your custom environment using the requirements.txt and ubiops.yaml files you included in your zipped deployment package. 
Under Optional slash Advanced Settings, you can configure the computing settings for your Llama deployment. For example, the type of GPU you want to run on, the maximum number of instances to be spun up at any given time, etc. Your choice of settings will mainly depend on how fast and how responsive you want your application to be. When you're happy with your setup, click Create. Then, navigate to the Environment Variables tab under your deployment. Here, you'll need to define an environment variable for your Hugging Face token. We do this because Llama 2 models are hosted on Hugging Face behind an authorization wall, so to access the model, you'll need to request access from Hugging Face. Once your request is approved, you can use a personal access token to download the model. In the Environment Variables tab, click on Create Variable to add an environment variable with the name HF token and your token as its value, then set it as secret. Your deployment is now live. How to create a front end for Llama 2 using Streamlit. Streamlit has written a helpful tutorial on how to build a front end for a Llama 2 chatbot, which we use to create an example of what your Streamlit code could look like, with some adjustments taken from our very own tutorial on integrating Streamlit with UbiOps. Feel free to grab the code from the full guide on our website. The first thing to take note of is the UbiOps API token variable. This is basically a password that's needed to authenticate with UbiOps and grant a user access to use your Llama 2 chatbot. It can either be provided to Streamlit through a secrets.toml file, or through the Streamlit code itself, or by a user accessing your front end. You can create an API token for your app in the UbiOps web app by navigating to Project Admin, Permissions, API Tokens, clicking on Add Token, and following the steps to add an API token with a project level role of Deployment Request User or above. Take a note of your unique token and use this code to access your chatbot. Next, you'll need to replace Insert Project Name, Insert Deployment Name, and Insert Version Name with the names of your application's project, deployment, and version respectively, exactly as they are in UbiOps. When you've completed these steps, run your Streamlit code file from a terminal. This should open a window in your default browser with your very own Llama 2 chatbot. Now, let's prompt our LLM using the Streamlit front end. Head over to the Streamlit front end you just created and input your UbiOps API token if necessary. This will unlock the prompt interface at the bottom of your UI. Ask your chatbot whatever you like. In the background, Streamlit will take your prompts and make a call to your deployment in UbiOps using a unique API endpoint and display its output as the chatbot's response. Bear in mind that response times will depend on the number of minimum instances you set in your version configuration. If set to zero, your deployment will need to initialize from scratch every time you feed a prompt, which will increase computing time. For a faster response time, you can increase the number of minimum instances. But remember that this will use up your computing credits faster, since you're essentially just keeping an instance of your deployment running in the background. You can always check on a request's progress by heading over to the Requests subtab under the deployment version that's in use. Here you'll find a full list of all requests that have been made to your model and their status, processing, completed, etc. How does Llama 2 perform on a CPU versus GPU? GPUs are a great way to increase the processing speed of your AI or machine learning models. Publicly available generative AIs such as ChatGPT, Midjourney, or Runway are running on powerful GPU setups which make it possible for users to get responses in seconds. But just how much faster is it to run a generative AI on a GPU compared to a CPU? Let's find out for ourselves. To do this, you'll need to create a new version of your Llama 2 deployment. You can name it something like CPU to easily differentiate it from your other version that runs on GPUs and upload the same deployment package. Now, make sure that the enable GPU toggle is set to off. In the advanced settings, you can select CPUs of various speeds. For this benchmark, we use the same instance type to run the model on CPU and on GPU. However, for the CPU benchmark, we didn't utilize the GPU from the instance. 
Now you can create requests to your Llama 2 deployment and have them be processed either by a GPU or a CPU by making the requests to the respective version. Then you can head over to Monitoring, then Deployments in the web app to compare their performance side by side by selecting each version and displaying them. Feel free to uncheck the Show Aggregated Metrics checkbox to declutter your graphs. Our own comparison showed that running Llama 2 7B on a CPU took around 85 seconds, compared to around 2.5 seconds on a GPU. That's a 32 times increase in processing speed. That'll definitely result in a better user experience. And there we have it. Our very own top-of-the-line Llama 2 chatbot accessible from anywhere through a Streamlit front end and hosted and served on UbiOps, all in under 15 minutes without needing a software engineer. Naturally, there are further optimizations that can be made to the code to get your deployment running as fast as possible every time. We left these out of scope for this guide, but we invite you to iterate and improve your own deployment. Having completed this guide, you may now be wondering how to tailor Llama 2 to your own particular need by adding fine tuning or prompt engineering to the equation. Or maybe you have an exciting idea for a Llama based application. Our team will be releasing more easy to follow guides on how to make the most of open source large language models. So until then, just shoot us a message or start the conversation in our Slack community. The UbiOps team would love to help you bring your project to life. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.